Piers Morgan and Meghan Markle's feud, pub date which sparked disdain and secret messages. Surprisingly, Meghan Markle and Piers Morgan were once very close but their friendship broke down spectacularly after she met Prince Harry. It's hard to think back to a time where Piers Morgan and Meghan Markle were actually quite close friends. The outspoken Good Morning Britain presenter and then Suits actress got chatting on social media in 2015, leading them to exchanging emails, messages and arranging to meet up for drinks. They spent a cozy night together in Piers' favorite pub in 2016 discussing a manner of personal topics, but it was the last time he ever heard from the Duchess of Sussex. At this point, I was indeed laboring under the massive misapprehension that we were friends. I was wrong, wrote Piers in his Daily Mail column in 2018. Their friendship broke down spectacularly, with Piers claiming he was ghosted by Meghan after she went to meet Prince Harry following their pub session. Since then he has become known for regularly criticizing Meghan in lengthy GMB rants most recently calling her interview with Oprah Winfrey vile destructive self-serving nonsense. Here's a look at how their friendship began and why it turned so sour. It all started off very cordially when Meghan and Piers first started talking back in September 2015. When Piers followed the actress on Twitter, she sent him a direct message which read, Well hello there, thanks for the follow. Big fan of yours. Posting a screenshot of the message last year, Piers wrote, In happier times. When Meghan first slid into my DMs. Think it's fair to say she's probably not such a big fan of mine now. The pair started exchanging messages and emails over the next year and a half and had amusing debates over Sood's storylines. They got so close that Meghan sent Piers previews of future episodes for him to watch before they went out on air so they could discuss them together. When Meghan came to London in June 2016 for work and to watch her friend Serena Williams play tennis at Wimbledon, she messaged Piers to ask if he wanted to meet up. Meghan came straight from the Royal Box to meet Piers at his local pub in Kensington, the Scarsdale Tavern. Describing Meghan as an old maid on GMB in 2017, Piers explained, we had 90 minutes in my local pub over a dirty martini and a pint of hand-pumped Harvey's. Trust me I'll be milking that 90 minutes if she becomes our princess for the rest of my days. Piers stated they were great buddies and revealed he was pushing for Prince Harry to propose to her. My take on her was she's very beautiful, she's very intelligent, she's 35, she's been divorced, her dad's white her mum's black and she had some problems with that growing up said Piers. I was really impressed I thought she was a very nice woman, very suited to Harry and different, biracial, an actress. After meeting up with Piers, he believes Meghan went to a private members club to meet up with Prince Harry. At this point, Piers claims Meghan went cold and it was the last time he ever spoke to her. He explained, she met Prince Harry at the dinner that night, went on a solo date with him the next night, and I never heard from her again. Not a word. I've been ghosted. However, at this stage Piers seemed to find the humorous side of the situation and was still backing the royal couple. Next thing I know, silence. Off the radar. I blame Harry. He has stopped me getting those new episodes of Suits, he joked. When news of their engagement was announced in November 2017, Piers was one of the first people to congratulate them. Joking about his friendship with Meghan disappearing, Piers wrote, Hearty congratulations, Harry. You picked a real keeper, even if your romance did destroy my beautiful friendship with the amazing Meghan Markle. Initially, Piers came out in support of Meghan in the build-up to the royal wedding after Thomas Markle spoke publicly. In May 2018, Piers claimed her foolish father had only himself to blame for missing his daughter's wedding day. But just days later he made a shocking U-turn and, and slammed his once good friend for not rushing to be with her sick father after he was forced to pull out of the royal wedding following heart surgery. Piers made a not-so-subtle jibe about Meghan using people and questioned why she hadn't gone to be with her ailing dad. I still like Meghan notwithstanding her disconcerting tendency to ghost people when they've served their purpose, tweeted the TV star.
who had not been invited to the wedding despite once enjoying declaring himself to be great buddies with her. Referring to the fact that she's remained in London despite her father's heart attack, Piers continued, but if my father was having heart surgery 8,000 miles away, I probably wouldn't stay in London working out what songs I want Elton to play at my party. Relations became increasingly strained as Piers repeatedly laid into Meghan and Harry over a number of issues. After they announced they were stepping down as senior royals, Piers branded them grasping, selfish, scheming Kardashian wannabes. In another glowing character reference he called the couple the world's most tone-deaf, hypocritical, narcissistic, deluded, windy brats. In April last year, Piers claimed he was banning Meghan and Harry from Good Morning Britain for the foreseeable. Before the topic even started, Piers refused to talk about them before taking aim at the couple. Piers said, let's not talk about Meghan and Harry today I can't be a D, let's just forget about them. He went on, yeah let's not bother with the others, let's just focus on the fact it's the Queen's birthday. Let's just forget about the ones in Hollywood whining about their own miserable poor lives in their mansion. Obviously Piers was not very happy with Meghan and Harry's recent interview with Oprah Winfrey, calling it puke-worthy and self-serving bilge. This comes after Piers called for the interview to be cancelled last week over the Queen's distress as Prince Philip remains in hospital. Piers also hit out at Meghan after reports that she had been accused of bullying aides at the palace emerged. It has been claimed that the Duchess of Sussex has faced a bullying complaint after being accused of emotional cruelty from a close advisor at the palace. However, a spokesman for the Sussexes has branded the report a calculated smear campaign based on misleading and harmful misinformation. Addressing the claims on Good Morning Britain, Piers called the report pretty devastating reading. Anyway, the question I have this morning, given that she's playing the victim in all this, Obviously, as always, actually, in her statement she says, I've been the victim of bullying myself, why would I bully anybody? He fumed, these are serious allegations. This is an allegation that Meghan drove two PAs out of the palace through alleged bullying, as the Times puts it, sourced to their own communications boss at the time. In an email. There is a suggestion that the reason they haven't spoken, these alleged victims of the alleged bullying, is because there were non-disclosure agreements at the time. Now, Meghan Markle is very strong about women finding their voice. She wants women to be free and feel secure enough to air their voice. So I'm assuming that if there are NDAs, Meghan Markle would wish for them to be removed immediately so that the PAs who left the palace after this alleged bullying were able to have their say and without any fear of any consequence. This is a very big story and it puts a very different gloss on what may be coming on Sunday when clearly, from the trailers, we are going to see two hours of victimhood and how awful Meghan Markle was treated by everybody here. It would appear, from this very damaging report, that it may be the other way round. Ahead of the Oprah interview, Pierce claimed he was ditched like a sack of spuds by Meghan while speaking on this morning. Discussing the interview, he said, we're all going to watch it. And I'll watch it through a slight jaundice tie I can't pretend I have from my own experience of having been friendly with Meghan and then been ditched like a sack of spuds. The GMB host claimed being cut off was a pattern which happened with many other people who had been in her life. Admitting he would hold anyone he knows to the same regard if they've done him wrong, Piers added, I'd feel the same way I would if you did it if Phil did it or anyone else. I don't know her anywhere near as well as I know you guys but I find it odd when people are overtly friendly to you for quite a long period of time, 18 months or so, and then because they meet someone higher up the social ladder, they ditch you. And you see all the stories about Meghan, it's a regular pattern. All that did was inform me that there was a different side to her. However, Piers would later deny that he hates Meghan when asked on Twitter but claimed he sees right through her, through her. 